everybody. Welcome back. Today I have a fabulous special guest. Her name is Kiara Marapodi. Oh my goodness. Her resume is quite impressive, but the work even more so. So let me share with you. She is a seeker. She's a learner, a researcher. She's a clinical hypnotherapist. She's certified in nutritional consultant. I need that. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Especially coming off of recent events. <laughs> An animal communicator, trauma, and a life transitions advisor. Kiara also has studied many modalities and offers truly one of a kind individualized approach for her practice and to help you get into your best self. She believes in the process of becoming is far from an easy path. However, it is one that is deeply rooted in the human experience, and it's more than doable, especially with the expertise like Kiara on board on your side. She has a melange of intuitive and the scientific gifts. Her goal is to build that bridge that supports the understanding of the self while grounding in best practice, because that is an important one. You can get sometimes a little, or at least for myself, I can get too far out and they're like, oh, wait a minute, I need to ground myself so I can actually process it. So anyway, so Kara supports her clients through life-changing events, such as divorce, which is totally right on our topic for today, and those relationship heartbreaks, life-changing events, creating a container to nurture your si yourself, sorry, safety and trust and reconnect the parts of you that have been disconnected through the process, either by stress or trauma or those old narratives that kind of sit in the background of our minds and our subconscious levels and seem to dictate quite a bit. <laughs> So, and that was my dog saying hi. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm not surprised. Hi. <laughs> the animal communicator side's already calling her out. <laughs> Too funny. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> and last it's but fun. not right? <laughs> no, last but not least, for sure, Dance of the Soul Transformation Center. Okay. So you will see these links below at the end of our interview. But welcome aboard, Kiara. I'm so happy to have you on board with this. I just completely fascinated with so many different things that you're involved in and that you excel at. So I guess my my first question for you is when you have that individual, whether it's male or female, that comes to see you and they're going through heartbreak. And I'm, I'm going to open this up a little bit more because it, it's not just divorce. It's a grieving process, whether it's a relationship with a human being or with a pet or an animal that you've just cared for and loved for, whether they're, as my dog said, hi, <laughs> <laughs> to horses, to, you know, cats, birds, all of the above. So how, when someone comes sees you, can, are you quick to figure out if it's more of the traumatizing relationship? from the hurt that transfers to a pet? Like, do they witness, you know, what's going on between quote mom and dad or the two partners or, you know, whatever grief has happened in there? How, like, where do you even start with that? Well, thank you, Anne. And I'd like to say thank you for honoring me uh, <laughs> and for the wonderful words that you spoke. And for having me uh, with you today, I truly, it is a privilege for me. And I want to first say that, um, you know, and, and I also want to speak to some of the things that you already mentioned in the threads, um, mm -hmm. most especially about divorce or loss or separation or grief. These are all interconnected. And I feel that any type of loss, um, from a sense of stable or safe safety in terms of the comfort of where we're at is a loss of connection. Whether it's a human to human, whether it's an animal with a human, when we have a loss of connection, then we have the beginning of grief and trauma and, and navigating that uh, mentally, emotionally, spiritually even, whatever that means to the individual is, often where we find difficulty. So um, having said that, and in answer to your question, how does it begin? 
Well, it depends if it's if I'm working with a human or an animal, it's slightly different. So the mm-hmm. animals don't have an I am. They don't have the ability or an ego, the ability to deceive or to lie. And they feel everything in their bodies. So the felt mm-hmm. sense is literally in their bodies. They're very much connected to the environment. They're very much connected to the body itself in relation to their space. Mm. they do have an emotional part of themselves experience and I'm sure you know many people who have animal companions I try and stay away from calling them pets because it means you yeah. call them, I don't own a soul no so, no um, but you know it, it's just a normalized word but I try and, and and use animal companion because truly they are walking parallel with us in life mm-hmm. and so when we meet you know with the animal for example having a time to find out who each other is nervous system to nervous system body to body Mm. connecting really our loss of connection is the refinding the reconnection via the body and then the soul to ourselves each other and also to animals and so when we have layers of distortion my first go-to is to look at the person or the animal as a whole being. Mm-hmm. And when we have layers of distortion, they're going to be at all these different points or perspectives, points of consciousness, like I like to call them. And to go to the one that shows up first. There is no script. There's no, well, this is what we've done before, so we're going to do it. Yes, it's grounded in, in, in evidential practice in the sense of, we're starting with where are you right now because Mm -hmm. that's grounding it in the here and now and it's very important and then from there when the person is ready because not everybody is ready to go into a soul connection straight away they have guarding they have armoring because their Mm -hmm. hearts layers Mm -hmm. there are layers Mm -hmm. so you know we begin with that to and fro between each other because it's a co-creation Um, between each other to begin the understanding of acknowledgement of where we're at emotionally psychologically and if we can spiritually because that loss of connection is really it's even if it's usually decided in a divorce for example it's a huge life event yes there is a sense of connection loss what did I do wrong what could I have done better you know, you know, and especially if it's if it's rooted in infidelity, for example, that becomes more complex in terms yeah. of the experience. Yeah. But what happens is there is almost a disintegration of the narrative and belief of who we are, what we think mm-hmm. we are mm-hmm. in relation to others, life in relationships. And so what we thought we knew disintegrates it's no right. longer it's a crumbling of the old to bring about the new but we're not quite ready for the new yet and it's a very difficult experience on your own <laughs> yes <laughs> I can certainly <laughs> attest to that it's much like um dismantling there Absolutely. was a few weeks ago and I it's been close to 12 years now actually just over 12 years now for since my divorce yes but there was a time just a few weeks ago where i came across something in a meditation and it was dissolving the ego but it wasn't so much that part as where i was sitting with it and i was like okay who am i so you go through the the process okay well i'm a mom I'm a friend, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, you know, the so on and so on. And then when it came to certain work positions, it was like, as you said, like a crumbling, like a dismantling of everything. And it's like, oh, you it, you kind of get down to the bottom so that you can figure out who you truly are in essence and then rebuild because I unfortunately was involved in that infidelity part of things and you're right it, it's a it's a whole other level because you don't trust yourself anymore you know and it's incredible mm. well I I honor you know I also have been through my own experience of divorce also through infidelity um, and so I can attest as well that it is a very difficult emotionally and I would say it's heart piercing 
in, in, in a sense, and also mind piercing in a sense where you question everything about yourself. You question everything about your decisions. You question whether or not, you know, you know what brought it to this point. And, you know, there are always two sides to the story. I want to always be fair uh, with oh. that. At the same time, the one who has received the understanding, and it's almost a shock when somebody, you know, it comes to light, it leaves them in a state of, well, what do I do with all these pieces on the ground that were thrown now? I thought with my life. <laughs> right. So, you know, um, it, it's it's not an easy place to be. And yet... You know, I want to bring the light and hope to this because yeah. even through this difficulty, you find the gifts and the gems because there is growth, release, and freedom in that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the psych, and you know, the world, is, as I know it, as I've experienced it, as my clients have shown to me, it really is a cycle. Everything is a cycle. Mm -hmm. And when things have, when the cycle has come to its conclusion, inevitably, unless you're both able to leap together into a new growth spurt, if the other person is not able to come with you for whatever reasons, you're going to do it on your own. And mm -hmm. I found that spiritual growth for me, being on my own, has been most, uh, I don't know what the word is in English, but it's been most profound. And okay. at all those different levels, because it's not, in my view, just about the dissolution of the ego. I don't really want to dissolve the ego in my personal view, because we need an ego to we be need it. in this yes. world. Um, Healthy but, ego. <laughs> yes, and it's the refinement of who I am. Mm -hmm. um, but I do want to backtrack a little bit in terms of the trauma piece, because I know when you're in it, it feels like it's never ending and it almost feels like there's so much coming at you. And in fact, with trauma, it really that the best definition I found about trauma is when you have too much more than what you can bear. That's trauma. Mm. Oh, that's a good point. I never really thought of it that way, like in such a short, succinct way. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, so if it's more than what we can bear, then it's going to be a nervous system experience first. Yeah. And really, if we look at the polyvagal theory, and here's the evidence-based grounding is what mm -hmm. I like to bring to what you mentioned. If we look at the polyvagal theory. It's one of my favorite theories because it is grounded in an understanding of the soma, the body. Um, and it explains things like, the yogic experience when we do yoga why the body you know seems to experience karma calmness is because we're toning the vagus nerve so oh. the vagal theory talks about social engagement being the most important thing for humans and animals mm -hmm. too and mammals at, it, at least um so it is basically about the gestures the 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 social engagement through gestures eye contact the voice you know, mm -hmm. we can look at attachment theory, but we don't have time today, but um, <laughs> there's a lot to unpack. But, you know, when we're going through this type of thing, that shuts down when we go into flight, fright, and freeze. And when okay. people find themselves in that, I really wanted to give them three things that could be helpful in this so that they can understand what would be good for them. Before I do, I wanted to say that historically we've been told that everything is a top-down affair yeah mm -hmm. but it's not you know everything's about the brain even in spiritual circles you know we go back to the neurons and everything I, mm -hmm. I don't believe that's the case I believe and because I've studied with the heart math institute I went to search for it because I realized everything's about the heart yeah. and the heart math institute shows it's a bottom-up affair hmm. so we can bring the heart into coherence we can bring, bring the rest of the body into coherence. And there is science to this. So it's bringing the DHEA levels down through the breath and the heart. And I'm going to give you some pointers. Okay, perfect. Um, bringing other hormones into place, bringing the coherence of the breath, so bringing the, the anxiety down uh, mm -hmm. for people uh, during these very highly emotionally charged times. 
And so even when we're triggered, because, you know, once we've had some trauma, we will have certain points in our lives where we might be triggered by something or someone. We don't really know why. It's a nervous system to nervous yes. system thing before we can actually register bottom up, not top down. down. So mm -hmm. the breath, the breath mm -hmm. is the most powerful thing. You were talking about meditation. So taking those long, deep breaths through the belly, and it helps to refocus the nervous system. The heart, breathing through the heart, the Heart Math Institute suggests and has researched this breathing through the heart space will bring the nervous system down. And again, the movement, engaging in yoga, because you're toning the vagus nerve, which is the wandering nerve of the body. And it is the most important nerve in the whole body for, for, you know, for longevity, for experience of a coherent life as opposed to being a decoherence which is the dysregulation of the nervous system flight fright freeze that's triggered a lot nowadays so i know we went i went on and talked a long time <laughs> oh it's good <laughs> um, so maybe it's necessary <laughs> Yeah, so I'm listening. In fact, I find like even when you're speaking about breath, I've already become more conscious of how I'm breathing sitting here. Yes. And it, it's yeah. funny because it's just just the mention of it. It's like, oh, yeah, you change focus that quickly. So I can't I mean, I'm excited, but I can't even imagine how much of a bigger impact I can even create with myself, honestly, but through this, like, and, you know, just paying attention. Therapy as when it's used well by a very seasoned practitioner mm -hmm. who is coming from a developed place and a, a place where it's not just the science of hypnosis, which we have a lot of science now with hypnosis, right. but it is the intuitive piece. So the, the yes. marriage and union of the science and the intuition, because when you're sit standing with someone or holding space with someone, it's mm -hmm. the connection that you have nervous system to nervous system that goes soul to soul later on. That's what I do yes. with the other ones and humans. Yeah. So with the hypnotherapy, you know, what we're teaching people through our voice, through the pacing, we're teaching yeah. the nervous system to feel safe again, because everything mm. that we've been talking about up to this point is about safety. And yes. I know through my experience, if, you know, the safety was a very big, big thing for me, if I didn't feel safe in someone's presence, I would leave. Mm. So... Uh, because the trauma, flight, fright, and freeze, and even fawning, you know, when you're fawning, um, it really is about being unsafe. And the nervous system is heightened now to be alert for those times. So when we talk about um, the polyvagal theory, they talk also about prosody. So that means the melodiousness of your voice. So I'll go randomly to places and people will stop and say, I love your voice. What's your name? Because there's prosody and, you know, having done hypnotherapy and learned that experience and learned how to open the mind with hypnosis yes. for myself and for other people and that come to see me, you're learning about how the voice supports the nervous system to feel safe. And then what do you yes. have that soul to soul connection? Cause you're opening space. Right. And many people, unfortunately today, we're in such a fast paced environment and we're not paying attention to the social engagement perspective of what it is to be who we are. Yeah. And it's everything, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's in relationships, whether it's in relationships with animals or humans, the mm -hmm. voice, the prosody, your gestures, your social cues, your facial expressions are yes. all the most important thing. Yes. Yeah. You know. As we're talking, I feel safe and I feel comfortable because your your features, uh, mm. your social expressions, your gestures, you're coming towards me and we're looking at each other. Mm -hmm. You know, when if somebody is doing something and they're just darting at you, looking at you and you start to feel uncomfortable, like what's wrong with me or what's wrong with them? What's wrong with the situation? Maybe I should leave. It's the, right. same, it's the exact same thing. And that's when we get triggered. And so this is why... I feel it's really important to understand this within ourselves to help ourselves. Mm -hmm. I agree. I completely agree. I noticed um, over the past few weeks, I've been doing more and more work from home-based 
Okay, mm -hmm. so inside office. And I went out to the grocery store the other day to pick up a few things. And it had been a while since I, I don't frequent the grocery store. I try to limit <laughs> my time in any grocery store. No offense to any of the big box stores, but I just, I want to go in, get my items and then come out. But I noticed this time I was tuning into energies mm -hmm. and it wasn't so much listening to people's words, but how they were physically interacting with whomever they were shopping with. And, it, mm -hmm. you know, some obviously were friends, some were parents and children and siblings and couples and so on. And I found it very um, enlightening because it's like, where did we get off track? <laughs> and again, this is, it is a bit of a judgment, but it was just my experience at the time of who was in there. I was like, oh my word, it, it was the, so much kindness, right? And so much being in the present moment didn't seem to be there. And again, it was just a blip of time, but I was like, you know, wow. I, I want to say that I feel it's not a judgment, it's an observation. Good point. And so, because yeah. we're not we're not judging the person, we're looking and observing at the behavior and mm -hmm. the patterns that we're noticing, mm -hmm. which is what the brain does. And this is what I do in my sessions. I ask questions. I I look for patterns and trends, and I bring them to to light. And the individual is like, "Oh man, you know, aha moments! I didn't know that." But you're you're bringing this, and you know, I like to watch in a restaurant, for example, how mm -hmm. people treat people who work at a restaurant because that gives you very much a, a clue about their momentary status and state of being which is what you're you're referring to I believe and it's an observation of you're right it, it you know kindness it doesn't take much to be kind and at the same time it feels like things have changed some shifted somewhat which is sad for me in a yeah, way, is when there's strife and hardship, it's a, it's a calling to mm -hmm. say, hey, look at your life. What in your life do you want to keep? What don't you want to keep and why? So mm -hmm. it's a moment to recalibrate, to reevaluate and to elevate and bring a different part of who we are to the world, to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And often it's missed. Yes. It's yeah. missed. I find... Um... When going back to like the, the relationship part. So with my little ones, when they were young, I always had this thing when any child walks into the room. Okay. And it was dedicated more to children, but I've incorporated it now finally to adults. <laughs> but when somebody <laughs> walks into the room, you smile, like whether you feel like smiling or not, smile because it, it can set that tone. And like you said, that safe zone, it's like, no, okay, I might personally be going through a challenge at the moment. However, it has nothing to do with you. I'm happy to see you. I'm happy that you're here. And yes. just, yeah, simple kindness. You know, to your point, I feel that we've not been very good, generally speaking, about focusing on communication. In our, in our society, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's very much, and, and I think the idea of social media and the, grat the, the quick gratification or information, you know, how quick it's become has diluted that more. Whereas, like you said, if somebody walks in the room and you're having a moment, the vulnerability of saying, I'm having a moment, it's good to see you, but this is where I'm at, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not actually a weakness, it's a strength because now you have mobilized that social engagement system, eye to eye, face to face, nervous system to nervous system, which then can develop into soul to soul connection, which everyone is seeking. True. At the end yeah. of the day, even on social media, why do we post all those things on there? Connection. For connection, <laughs> but it's not the one we're looking for because it's disconnected on there. <laughs> it's like a cycle, but you're so right. Yeah, it's important, it's, and especially good. <laughs> well, I, I'm I'm a little distracted at the moment, Kara, because for whatever reason, my dog. <laughs> I do know why, but <laughs> so I'm going to at some point here. I will introduce her because this is the first time in any interviews that I have ever conducted. She's just insistent. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you're gonna hear some more like grumbling you know when your 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 loved ones yes, want attention yes. right I so this is adorable <laughs> So you're used to it. So. Um, I, you know, sometimes I'll be doing these uh, sessions online with, I mean, yeah. animal communication and sessions. You can do them online. It doesn't really. Um, and I do a lot of work online worldwide. So, you know, and the animal will come straight to the computer and, and the human is like, <laughs> you do that. They're rubbing the computer, especially the cats. You know, when they rub the computer yeah. on their and it's like, you know, and so I'm not surprised. Thanks for telling me. That's so wonderful. <laughs> it's my day. <laughs> I'm just laughing. She's she's a sweepy. Um, she's a little Chihuahua uh, Papillon mix, and so I, and oh, I oh my goodness, see. yep, the big bat like yours. Yes. But she <laughs> has, um, she'll be turning thirteen this year, and there oh. there will be days, Kiara, where I will look at her and I thank her, like not just playing and hugging and you know doing our daily thing, but I will literally tear up and thank her for being that support system. Yes. So, and then I look at him like, girl, you've been through a lot. <laughs> and, you know, let's talk about that a little bit because, you know, yes. and I think you touched on it when we first started, but um, it's come full circle around. And this is what usually happens when something's important to be shared, it will come back full circles and yeah. the animals are absolute players in this. And we might have my cat come too, because she tends to come. <laughs> <laughs> Just so that, you know in case this happens um but you know they do they run everything through their bodies when there is distress in the house mm -hmm. and so with their humans so for example if there is divorce if there is stress if there is something that's uh relationally not right the animals will try and write it and will always use their bodies for that because they live in it they will mm -hmm. run some of the emotions through their bodies most especially kidneys i find a lot of work I do in the energy work that I do and the acupressure work I do is based on the kidneys and the gut because oh, wow. they're running their emotion, the emotions of the human that they can't really understand. We have much more complex emotions and I'm not saying they don't feel complexity of emotions, but they're not mm -hmm. human emotions. It's more, um, it's a different type of consciousness and we need to honor that. So they're mm -hmm. running emotions and experiences through their body to try and hold and support their humans up that they can't actually understand mm. so most of my work is removing that releasing that supporting them where they're at to come back into their own coherence and so yes they do get affected by that i'll give you an example there was a thoroughbred and you know they raced uh, mm -hmm. thoroughbreds and they and, and horses have very large hearts but because of some of the uh, chemicals that they're given to make them run faster sometimes we won't go into that yeah. too much but mm -hmm. there's many things that happen that we're not told about in the horse industry in, in, the, in the racing industry and um, so this horse had an enlarged heart and he'd been taken off the track and he was being rescued did a communication with him and he basically gave me the feeling because they give you pictures feelings frequencies colors and experiences with mm -hmm. the body mind first not with work mm -hmm. yeah. so the experience was that he needed to have coherence of the heart again and the only way to do it was connect with mine I bring coherence to my heart and then we have a to and fro which we did oh my goodness I have never experienced that in my whole life in terms of the intensity of it um, and I, you know, it, it was holding space, which is what I do a lot. I hold a lot of space to work mm -hmm. with humans and animals to find themselves again, literally out of the trauma and the stress. Um, but once it was complete, that energy just dropped out by itself. It has an intelligence provided that we're in the right space to be there and mm -hmm. to not project the human mind and emotions upon it because okay. that distorts and stops everything. Um, and connection drops out. So um, they do, they take on a lot from humans to hold and support us through our journeys of life. Yeah. So, yes. It um, has surprised me from, like she's, as I said, she's going to be 13 this year. And the previous loved one was 14 years old when they crossed over. Mm -hmm. And at that time, 
uh, there was a significant life changes as well going on. My mother had passed away and there was just a, a bunch of stuff going on. And I'll never forget it because when I took her to the vet, because I knew it was time to, you know, help her cross over. And when <laughs> I, I, I'm, I can kind of laugh about it now, but at the time I had never, like my mother had already passed, other things were going on. And what hit me was having to help my loved one go down to yeah. cross. Yes. Oh my amazing. word. I hyperventilated, <laughs> like, I sat in the car, just shaking. And I'm like, but, but, and then I'm like, oh, it's the unconditional love mm. It's the support. Like there's, you know, yes. I mean, my, you know, all my little fur balls, as I call them, they'll, they'll paw at you to get attention. It's like, okay, mom, let's go for a walk. Okay. Let's go. Yes. They have needs too. <laughs> Oh, I think you muted yourself, Anne. Or oh, it did it naturally for some reason. There we go. There we go. Yeah, there we go. And, um, but I was amazed at the impact of it all. And and quite frankly, I have a, a dear, dear, dear friend of mine whose um, loved one, Furball, <laughs> had crossed over many years ago. And it's still that intense heartbreak in there and they're working through different things and they're they're still not quite ready for another one no and, and you know, i don't know how you make that transition because i literally was pushed into having another one in my life and, and i'm so grateful yeah you know you bring up a really important point that animals really open the heart space mm -hmm. and you'll notice that you when you're in a distressed state provided that they have enough coherence in their system, mm -hmm. they will be there for you and try and change and engage in play. Yeah. Because one of the ways to engage that social engagement system is through curiosity and play, those two things. And if we are able to bring a curiosity to our difficulties and, and acknowledge this is where I'm at, this is why I think I'm there, it's curious to me, let me just see what this feels like and sit there so and then when we bring the play into it we're able to begin to self-regulate instead of being in that dysregulated self we're coming back to ourselves and regulating it and had animals do this a lot they do it a lot inherently because they're here in the heart space they open the heart and they don't have an ego they don't deceive they don't right. love they don't do any of that and they're safe to be with as a result. Yeah. And the sure. nervous system knows that. And so they, they do that a lot. So in, in, in looking and exploring the other question that you had in terms of how do you deal with the grief of uh, the passing of an animal companion? Because it, it, it's true that, that the love that they give is a gift that mm. is unfathomable because there is no cognition the way the human has the ability to think negatively to think um and to ruminate on things the way that we do they have obviously they do have a thinking brain in some respects but it's not the same complexity that we have it's more of um it's it's very different type of consciousness point so I don't think there's an easy answer to that. I feel that the love that we have felt from animals is true. Mm -hmm. And we know that. And it actually brings us back to our childhood essence. True. That yes. has curiosity in the play. Because yep. now they're activating that child part of us where what we wanted was to be loved unconditionally. Yep. For the archetype of the, the mother and the father. And, you know, they do bring some of that, obviously not the same as the archetype of the mother and father, but they act yeah. that in us and we do receive that from them and it's nurturing and nourishing for us. Yeah. And so, you know, to, you know what, Kara, go. I'm going to pause you for just one sec because something just occurred to me where I wonder, and I'm sure there's a correlation, this would be an entire whole, like Please. probably several hour conversation. Yes. <laughs> I'm thinking about when, like when little ones, children, when yes. they really, 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 really have this deep desire to have 
that animal companion, whether it's a hamster, whether it's a cat, a bird, yes. you know, and you kind of what I, it's just, it's piquing my curiosity where when someone has that such a strong desire that there must, there's a, I don't want to say lack, that's not the right word, but there's a difference where there's something that needs more nurturing for that. I'm looking at her. You're looking yeah. at her. I am the living example of that. Yeah. Because I grew up in Africa <clears throat> and having abilities to sense differently in mm. this world often is, is, is frowned upon. And yeah. so, you know, the animals were a soulless. They yeah. were a space where there would be no judgment. You could be seen without being judged and you were accepted. Mm -hmm. And, you know, every human, and we'll go back into this a little bit, we can. Every human wants to be seen, understood, and heard. Yes, absolutely. Whether yes. they're two years mm -hmm. old, whether they're younger, whether they're older, these three things I have found to be universal. Mm -hmm. So the animals do that. Mm. They don't talk to us, but they <laughs> talk through their body language. It's all pre-verbal. Mm -hmm. And what I do want to say is that, you know, babies, I can connect with babies the same way I can connect with animals because they're open, they're pre-verbal. They don't have the cognitive mindset yet. Yeah. So when we as human, as caregivers, we're in our adult mind, in our heads, and we're projecting that on a baby. I'll give an example. And, you know, it bothers me that people, experts share with people, uh, mothers and caregivers, and I know they're doing the best that they can. I'm, there's no judgment here, but what bothers me is the child. Um, the child's experience, when they say, let the child cry for 40 minutes, it's okay. For me, that's an absolute no-no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. because the child does not I don't agree yeah. yes. I don't agree with me. that either no. it bothers me because the child does not have an understanding that oh my mom's going to come when I'm finished crying I'm going to learn from this no the child is wanting to understand that the world hence the caregiver is the world right now mm -hmm. is going to be there for me and my nervous system when I'm dysregulating so I can feel safe again yes so um, knowing it's okay yeah. Yes, because otherwise mm -hmm. they were, they're going to grow up and the world is, is not a, a healthy place. The world is not there for me. I'm not going to get nurtured. It's not there for me. I'm always going to be striving to survive. Right. And so, again, it's because we're at that social engagement, nervous system to nervous system connection, and then the soul to soul connection. And I teach this to caregivers, too, with their, their, their babies, because they're open. They're so they're very much similar. They don't have the cognition of the adult mind. It's pre verbal. <laughs> I have a nickname to share with you. Please go. So, as you're sharing this with me, it my niece and nephews, when they were little, I have um, a younger niece and then a set of twin nephews. And my sister, at some point, I don't know honestly how it stuck, but at some point I was nicknamed Binky. Okay. Like the little pacifiers. Okay. okay. And she said, I was the only one that was able to calm down my nephews. <laughs> <laughs> and to this day, they're adults. I am called Aunt Binky. <laughs> well, you know what? I actually think that's the best Funny. pacifier ever, ever. <laughs> because if you can pacify the nervous system of a newborn yeah. um, and allow the nervous system to understand that whatever happened and it's been stressful, you're going to be okay. I'm here for you. That is the greatest gift that you could ever yes. give to any human, I any agree. animal or human for that matter. Um, going back to my horse, I have a thoroughbred who was on the track. She was terribly abused. She had mm -hmm. PTSD. I wrote a paper on PTSD because of her. We used all sorts of integrative therapies to help her. And she's come a long way in the seven years I've had her. She taught me everything about trauma. Wow. But, you know, it's my voice. So this is where the evidence-based practice comes in. Before I knew about the polyvagal theory, I went with my intuition. Mm -hmm. And my intuition was if I sang Amazing Grace to her at a certain pitch using the prosody of the voice, okay, she would calm down. If she was paced, she would calm down. If I made it too high, the pitch, or too low, she'd have a PTSD episode. And I'm like, this is weird. Wow. So I went intuition, mm -hmm. go to science, have a look and look at the science. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. And there it was. The research is if it's too high, the pitch, 
you create a PTSD trigger. Too low, the same, but if it's at a certain pitch and you have that prosody, the nervous system is mm -hmm. calibrating. So one day she colicked and uh, before the vet came out, I did acupressure points, but I sang. By the time mm -hmm. the vet came to her, she was normalized. <laughs> so you, you know, saved it, yourself some money. <laughs> Well, more than that, I saved her. Okay. That was my greatest yes, fear. And sure. I was like, oh my gosh, I just wanted her nervous system to regulate yeah. as quickly as possible so we didn't go wow. into dysregulation. Um, and obviously, you do need the vet help afterwards. There's always a physiological follow up. Yeah. Whatever you do, I do believe the, that whole being perspective is important. So, but these are just examples of how powerful that nervous system to nervous system connection and then it becomes that soul to soul connection is for anything that we do in life and I, yes it's incredible it truly i'm humbled <laughs> by i in, in or in most cases in all cases actually with my clients whether they are human or animal you know it's always a gift it's a oh gift. my goodness yes well i hands down you are definitely a gift <laughs> we all are you know to each other yes, I, to I just each other. it's amazing to find people and to find like quite frankly you are the first that i have found that encompasses so much of it and to do it so excellently well, and I've effortlessly been. and i'm sure there's a lot of work behind the scenes going on especially <laughs> energetic wise and so, but it, it's i it's a blessing and i'm so glad that you followed your path and that's the other thing is like when you have that system in place and you begin to trust yourself more and you work on yourself and to follow it it just gets better and better and better so it does. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you. I want to say thank you for seeing me. That is the greatest gift that anyone could give to me. And I want to remind everyone that you don't just have one purpose in life. Often we have multiple. True. And the purpose is change as we change. And that's mm -hmm. what you really want. I feel that people we're talking generally, of course, we don't have individual, we everyone has individual differences, but we're told. You need to find your purpose, do this. Really, it's a calling. And sure. the calling changes. And so my calling, I'm going to say, was the animals. They mm. changed my life. <laughs> and by me allowing myself to be engaged with them in a way that wasn't the norm, really allowed me to develop into and be shaped by my experiences. Um, and also to, with the calling, you, there is the seeker, which comes with the calling. Once you have yes. it and you feel it, then you seek it. And it's this beautiful cycle and circular because everything in the universe is circular. And to encourage, I have, would like to say a few words of encouragement, if I may. Mm -hmm. Often when we feel that we're lost or we feel that we don't have direction, then it's time to take a, a step back, to breathe, to mm -hmm. come back to the heart space, whether it's touching an animal, hugging an animal to help us in, to get that mm -hmm. movement, seeking out support from individuals who are professionals like you, me, and other people that you've interviewed um, based on their expertise. But ones that resonate with us here, the heart is mm -hmm. everything. Absolutely. Heart is everything. You can have PhDs coming out of your ears. You can have materialist understanding of knowledge, mm -hmm. but without it embedded and connected with this heart space, the intuition, the wisdom, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. then it becomes clinical. And there is a time and space for that, but sure. there's also bringing us back to who we are as humans embodied in this body. And so we have souls. Yes. Animals have mm -hmm. souls. So I hope that that's a message of hope for people. I think so. I absolutely. Yeah, I do. Uh, I completely agree with you. It's incredible because as, as you said, you can have that intellectual side, but it needs to be encompassed. And without the heart yes. in there, it's it will get lost again, frankly, in my opinion. 
I agree with you. Yeah. And, you know, Rudolf Steiner talks about the threefold system. Mm -hmm. And the threefold system is the head, which is the thinking, the hands, mm -hmm. which is the doing in physical reality, bringing abstract to concrete. But mm -hmm. right in the middle, which it's is the heart. Shared, it's the heart. <laughs> it's the heart. Right. So we're right there, you know. <laughs> and I think that may be how perhaps part of what people are feeling is missing and they're searching for it searching for it and actually the temple of love is in ourselves yes i agree over time and and it, it yes and the support with the trauma helps to reconnect with that in safety yes yes because once you feel safe and trust yourself again it's like the it's sky's the limit yes yeah it's, it's incredible very true. It's very yeah. true. All right, Kira, I have one more question for you. <laughs> so I would, I know, actually, I have a whole bunch of questions, but for now, one more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, what material, whether it's book form or video or magazine, like what did you, have you come across something that has really impacted you greatly that you can share with the audience? Okay. I'm glad you asked that question. I have a favorite book. When I was about 28, I was living in London. And this is, wasn't the start of the journey, but it was the start of coming back to myself because I find okay. we often veer off our course because we think, we feel that we're growing up. We're finding right. ourselves, yes. right? Yes. So it's a meandering of sorts. It's exploring. So, <laughs> yes. So it was coming back to me through the heart and that calling. I picked up a book by Krishnamurti called Freedom from the Known. And that was the beginning of my hypnosis experience without me knowing it. Because um, the knowns are what we are, what gives us comfort. We know it. And we'll always mm -hmm. seek it, whether it's pleasurable or painful, because we know it. And we often are not um, aware of this. Yeah. And this book enlightened me to freedom from the knowns how do we question how do we question ourselves and what we're thinking in our belief systems that just pop in and are automatic and is it real are we an observer or are we not are we true that so all these questions were coming into my mind and that really was an opening of my mind so to speak that then allowed the heart to open because you know it goes both ways as you begin to eat to read True. things it opens the mind to the possibility of something else which then corresponds to the bottom-up perspective and there's always this involved in it the heart and that even when I read it now I always learn something new and that's the type of material in terms of book that I absolutely love being able to pick it up and at different evolutions of who I am and who I'm becoming, I get another gem from it. Wow. Okay. I'm definitely going to have to check that one out because I'm not familiar with it. So yes. thank you. Yes. Well, thank you. <laughs> All right, everybody. I know we've ran a little bit longer, but I could keep Kiara on here for another two hours. Easy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we won't do that to her today. Maybe another time. So I do want to share with everybody that is watching please check down below. You will see all her contacts. We'll get the name of that book in there. So we've got the spelling. And I want to mention to the audience as well that Kiara has got a really fabulous YouTube channel. Check her out. And one in specific that spoke to me recently is Coffee with the Coach with Dr. Islam. I love the format. It, it's like that beautiful random but not random and you always like you just said you get those gems those nuggets out of the conversation so please everybody check this out okay and as a gift for you that are watching and listening if you happen to be on um you know iHeartRadio or wherever you're at because <laughs> you never know where these things go Kara has so graciously gifted sessions okay so this is five sessions for a total of $400 and you are literally saving money. You're saving 20% off the normal amount. And I do have a question regarding your sessions. Can they be for your animals? Oh, yes. So oh, it's yes. a session. And I, cause I have a feeling that's going to be a really big one. 
Yes. Yeah, it's yes. funny. People don't have a, a hesitancy when it comes to their love for fur. <laughs> It's in true. The format of you know it's your true. companions. Well, that's because they give so much. Yeah, <laughs> and absolutely. I'm really nice. so much. Please, please, please check her out. Take advantage of this of what she's gifting you. And it would be so worth every part of it. And reach out to her. Her contact information, like I said, is going to be below. Thank you, Kiara. I have learned so much in this. Oh, and <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Until next time, everybody, we will see you then. Thank you. Bye.